Hello everyone, and I trust that you're having a great day. Now today we are continuing with Convex Lens and what we want to do is to look at the formation of images for all the possible positions of the object. Before we do that, let us quickly do a quick review of the general concepts of a convex lens. And so as a reminder, a convex lens is also called a converging lens. The reason for this is that when parallel rays pass through the lens, they will refract and converge, which means they will come together. The very central path through the lens from the narrow end to the other narrow end is called the optical axis. We also have the very center of the lens that is called the optical center. We also have an imaginary line that is called the principal axis. And this imaginary line must run from 2F to the other 2F on the opposite side through the optical center. And that is represented by the white line. Now, what we also have along the principal axis is what they call the focal point or the principal focus. Again, point to note is that the principal focus is the point where all the refracted rays will pass through. Again, remember that refracted rays come from parallel incident rays. All right, we also have what they call the focal length. And the focal length is the distance from the optical axis to the focal point. All right. We will also have what you call a center of curvature. And the center of curvature is really 2F. And 2F is twice the distance of the focal length. We will have an object, which we'll discuss later in, the, in terms of position of the objects. That, that's our main concern for this lesson. And a point to note is that the object distance is the distance from the object to the optical axis. All right. We also have what we call the incident ray coming from the object. The one that is shown, however, is called the parallel incident rays. And remember that parallel incident rays, they are the ones that will be refracted and pass through the focal point. All right, and hence that um, red line represents our refracted ray that is going through F, all right, or the focal point. All right, so another thing we're going to look at right now is some key points about the image. And once I talk about the image, I'm, I'm going to relate the image to the object in terms of size, positions, and so on. So the first point I want to make is that if the image is on opposite side of the lens, then the image is real and also inverted. However, if the image is on the same side of the lens as the object, then the image is virtual and also upright. The next point to note is that if the image is closer to the lens compared to the object, then the image will be diminished or otherwise smaller than the object. And the opposite is also true. If the image is further away from the lens, then the image will be magnified and also, which is the same thing as larger than the object. All right. All right. So since we have these now, let's jump into drawing or read diagrams for different positions of the object. And so the first one I'm going to look at is that if the object is at F, all right? And so remember now, our step or the steps in doing this is first to draw your incident ray that is going through the optical center. And if it, go, if it goes straight through the optical center, then there is no deviation or refraction. So it's just a straight line going straight through, all right? Now, what we're going to do next is to draw our parallel incident ray. And our parallel incident ray must come from the top of the object all the way to our optical axis. Remember, remember what we talk about parallel rays. Parallel rays will refract and then they will go through F. And so this will refract and go through F. Now, notice the rays that are coming from the lens, they are parallel to each other. Therefore, they will never, ever meet. And so what we can see about the image that is formed is that the image will be at in infinity and also on the opposite side of the lens compared to the object. The image will also be inverted. It will be real and definitely it will be magnified. Again, if it's, if it's so far away from the lens, then you can imagine it will be an, a really large image. All right, so let's jump into the next position and we're looking at 
if the object is between F and 2F. Again, we'll draw our unrefracted ray. Then we draw our parallel incident ray. It will be refracted through F. And notice where they meet. They will meet just behind 2F. And so we can say the image is beyond 2F and also on the opposite side of the, ob of the lens compared to the object. Definitely inverted. Also real, again, because it's on opposite side. And also because the image is further away from the lens compared to the object, then definitely it is magnified. All right? Now let's jump into the next position, which is the object at 2F. If the object is at 2F, again, our unrefracted ray, our parallel ray, our refracted ray, and notice where they meet. They meet at 2F. And of course, you can now assume if the image and the object, if they are at the same distance from the lens, then you know exactly what will happen, right? And so the first thing I want to talk about is that, yes, the image is at 2F and definitely on opposite side of the lens compared to the object. It is inverted. It is definitely real. And certainly because the distance between them and the lens will be equal. So they are equal distance from the lens. So therefore, they are the same size. All right? Now let's look at if the object is beyond 2F. Again, our un unrefracted ray, our parallel ray, and then we have now our refracted ray. Notice where they meet. They meet just in front of 2F. So therefore, we say the object is between F and 2F, based on what we're seeing here. It's an opposite side, of course. Definitely inverted. Definitely real. Again, once it's on the opposite side of, of the lens compared to the object, is always real. And what is also important, which one is closer? If you look at it, definitely the image is closer. So therefore, the image will be smaller or diminished. Now, let's look at if the object is in front of F. And this is really a cool one. And so this will also help me to bring out a point. And so let's draw our undeviated um, ray going through optical center. Our parallel ray, incident ray, in fact, and then that will be refracted through F. Notice the two rays that are leaving the lens, they're getting wider and wider. In other words, they're moving away from each other. So they will never meet on the opposite side of the lens. However, what they can do, though, is to extend the lines or the rays through the lens itself. So let's just do that for the one in red and also the one in green. Notice what happened here now. They actually meet on the same side as where the object is. And so therefore, the image will form right there behind the object. And so what we can see here is that the image is between the object and infinity. We do not want to specify an exact location. The reason being because if you shift the object between the lens and F, the position of the image will definitely change, right? So it's always safer to say that the image will definitely be behind the object or between the object and infinity. What we'll notice here is that it is upright. It is also virtual because it's on the same side as the object. Again, it is magnified, which would be much larger than the object, right? Now let's look at if the object is at infinity. Now, if the object is at infinity, now, if you're coming from infinity, what you need is parallel lines, right? Or parallel rays. And so what you can draw first is the one that goes um, straight through the optical center. And then what we're going to have right now to make it parallel is one going through F. Again, remember if an incident ray goes through F, it will leave the lens in a parallel manner, and I'm saying parallel to the principal axis. Notice where they meet. They meet right at F. And so the image is at F, certainly on the opposite side. It is inverted, definitely considered to be real. And since the image is closer to the lens compared to the object, then definitely it is smaller and also diminished. All right. There's another option to draw this same um, ray diagram. And so let's jump into that one, which would be the last one. And so the other option here is 
to have two parallel lines coming along the principal axis. I know this is how they are, are positioned. And so what I'm going to do, remember, if you have parallel rays, they will refract and pass through F. So one going through F, the other going through F. They meet at F, if you notice that. And so what we can also do is to put another line, which is the undeviated line or ray, through the optical center. And so our image will form right at F. Again, is an opposite side, inverted, real, and definitely smaller than the object itself. All right, so I hope these um, ray diagrams uh, were really helpful in terms of your understanding of how you position object versus image when, when it comes on to convex lens. All right, so at this point, I really want to thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. And I want to remind you that you need to be a ray of light. In other words, please be helpful and also be someone's ray of hope. I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you soon.